In this video, I will demonstrate how to calculate a histogram for a continuous variable from a uh, data set in Excel. So what we have here is our Titanic data set. And one of the variables here is the age variable. Now, we have altogether uh, 1,313 observations, but not all of our observations have age information in this data set. Okay, there may be other data sets where perhaps some more research has been done to find out age of these other people, but for we're working with this, we only have age observation for 920 um, for 920 passengers. Okay, um, so that's important. So let's actually, we may also want to know what the oldest passenger here was, 65. Right? It looks like 65 is the oldest passenger. Um, we're dealing we're talking 1912, um, people didn't get all that old at that time. So, how do we calculate a histogram? Now, firstly, what we do in a histogram when we have continuous data, we create buckets, for instance, age zero to five, and then we count how many uh, observations we have in that category, and then perhaps um, six to 10, and then perhaps 11 to 20 and so forth. And we count for all these categories how many observations we have, and then we try and display display that. So how do you get that information? So here's the easiest way to make Excel count all of these categories. We're using the um, data analysis function of Excel. If you can't see that data analysis function here, you need to go to File, Options, Add-ins, Excel Add-ins, and you need to tick Analysis Tool Pack, as I've done here, and then that option will appear for you. Okay, here, Data Analysis. So, just go somewhere, an empty space, we'll click Data Analysis, and then you get an option, some sort of cool things you can do. The one we're interested in here is a histogram. So we'll click OK, and we get this little uh, window, uh, dialog window. We're being asked for which data input range. So which data do you want to create a histogram for? Well, the age data. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to start by just, so you can uh, click on that arrow, and then you can just highlight on your spreadsheet where the data are. So let's put the C in. OK. Bin range will going to use that in a moment, but we first leave it open. That means Excel will use some sort of default option. And then output range, either a new worksheet or I usually like to put it somewhere into that worksheet. So let's choose H8. And we want a chart output. So we tick the chart output here. And let's click OK. So we get an error message here, and that's important that you learn how to deal with error messages in any sort of software. So it says histogram input range contains non-numeric data. OK, so why is that the reason? In the input range, we just said, well, take all column C. Now, there's a problem. Not all the columns, uh, not all the values in that column are actually numbers. For instance, the title, H. And we know at the bottom of the spreadsheet, we're having non-available data. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to highlight only the data where we have ages. Now, as you can actually see, we have, oh, there's actually some older. We're having here these data, but then there are more data further down where we have ages because they're currently sorted by age category. Uh, sorry, not by age category, but by passenger class. So let's actually abandon that attempt. Let's say cancel here. We first have to do something else. So what we're going to do is we first going to sort our data set. So can highlight all this, go to sort, and we're going to sort by age. 
Okay, so now we can actually really find out how many observations for H do we have. So we'll see how deep we can go here while we still have H data. Oh yeah, we lost some here. Okay, seven hundred and fifty row seven hundred and fifty seven. That's one header row. That means we have seven hundred and fifty six observations with H and turns out the oldest passenger there are three passengers at the age of 71. Okay, so let's go back up to the top. So let's do a new attempt, start a new attempt histogram. So we don't want the entire column, click on that little arrow, and let's only highlight what we want. So 757 here. Okay, click on that little arrow again that's entered bin range we still leave open output range that's fine chart output is still ticked all good to go so we're here okay before we look at that i just highlight that control x to cut and i'll just want to put that and then now control v to paste here so here's our histogram now what has happened this Excel has chosen all these sorts of categories here. Okay, so there's data up to 0.17. Okay, so ages up to and including 0.17, how many are that young? Well, only one. Miss Elizabeth Cladis. Okay, she survived, the youngest passenger survived. So then, how many are there which are older than 0.17 and have age up to 2.79 so let's see older and then up to two all of these highlighted cells these are you can see that down here again these are 19 cells so that's where that 19 comes from okay that's how many we have excel has chosen these sort of cut off points by itself it uses some algorithm i actually don't know exactly what it does and it's just sort of it looks like a lot of age categories perhaps a, a few too many for us but the histogram function has the option for you to choose your your own categories let's decide we want let's create some input here the boundaries for our categories let's say we want I'll just I usually start with a zero here you don't need to uh, where we start um, everyone up to age 10, then between 10 and 20, 30 and so forth, and how far you can highlight that and track that down. Excel immediately knows what you want to do. We ha only have to go up to 80 because we know our eldest passenger was 71. So let's use these boundaries, a bit more pleasing than these randomly chosen ones. Okay, so let's fire up our histogram again. Input range still from previously is still okay, but now for bin range, we will enter our own bin range, and that is going to be this one here. Output range, let's say uh, um, J41. Let's see, it's J41. So we are next to our bins somewhere. And chart output, okay. Okay, so here we are. So Excel gives us these bins because we Hold it, it should be these bins, okay, and the frequencies here. So there are 55 passengers which are up to 10 years old. Let's confirm that here. We see they're ordered by age. So row 56, that's the last one with 10. We know we have a header row, so that's 55 passengers. That's exactly what we have here. And here's our histogram. Okay, so this is our histogram. Now now some aesthetic things when we have a histogram we usually don't want because the the variable is a continuous variable we don't want to see these sort of blocks or these bars separated bars so let's do some aesthetics here in this picture firstly we don't need this you highlight that click delete goes away then down here so while this is currently frequency, that's correct. Bin, these bins, what we really want to see here is age. If you show that picture to someone, 
then what does that mean? We want to know that the numbers we see here, they represent ages. So you could highlight it and just type in age. Okay, there are different ways to do that, but perhaps that's the easiest way. Let's click that away. So, but we still have these gaps. We want to remove these gaps. Now, if you double click on any of the bars, okay, you get like a little window here which says format data series. And one of the options here is gap width. So that's the width of the gap between the bars. Or we'll just bring this down to zero. And put your cursor into the next box. Here we go. This is now a pretty good. This is a pretty good picture. That's sort of a picture we have here. All right. So I want to create one extra version of this histogram. And that is where we don't use uh, the frequencies. But what we're going to use instead is um, the relative frequencies. So what we need for the relative frequencies, we firstly need to know how many passengers are there altogether, at least how many are there for which we know the age. Okay, so we just sum up all these numbers. 756. We saw that earlier when we looked at the table. So now we want the relative frequency. Let me calculate that divided by that. And we want to fix. We need to put dollar signs into that red reference because as we copy it down, we don't want it to move. Let's copy that down. Here are our relative frequencies. Okay, so you can see the biggest group of passengers is this one here. That's the one with the um, uh, top age is 30. So it's the group of 20 to 30 year olds. So if you now want to show this relative frequency, Easiest way is we use a bar chart. Okay, so we'll put that just one across. We'll use the bins. But actually, we could use H here. Okay, so we highlight this, insert bar chart. Uh, sorry, I think it gets thrown by this title actually. It thinks it's two variables. So let's do it like this. Okay, so here is our chart. Again, we need to do some work. So this now, because we're using this spin function, uh, the, this um, bar chart functions, it doesn't give us um, names for the vertical and the horizontal axis, but perhaps we want that. So one way you can manipulate that on the top left here, you see add chart element. So axis titles, primary horizontal axis, and here's our access title. We want this to be H. And then let's see where we can also add the vertical axis, access title, primary vertical axis. There we go. And that is relative frequency. Right, so that's fine. Then we again want to remove the, uh, the gap. Zero. Okay. So here's our chart. Now, of course, it shows basically exactly the same information as this histogram. Just instead of frequency, it has relative frequency here. Okay, otherwise, it's exactly the same information. So this is how you produce histograms in Excel.